Just a little bit ago, I made a video on this camera, the DJI Pocket 3, talking about my use case and what I use this camera for. And I got a ton of feedback in that video, people liking the footage and also asking how I got the footage and what my settings were and all that sort of stuff. So this video, I'm gonna go over what my current settings are on this camera because it's changed since that video how I got that footage because it does look pretty good and uh, I'll explain how I got that. And I also wanna get into the editing process, what I do with the footage after I filmed it and to you know, clean it up to get it the way I want it to be. So if that's something you're looking for, stick around. Maybe consider hitting that subscribe button right underneath the like. All right, let's get into it. I'm gonna show you guys how I do the setup on the car for mounting the camera. And for that, I got my buddy Renee and his Subaru here to, <laughs> to be the car that we're filming for this exercise. So yeah, first we'll get the camera mounted on the car. We're gonna start with the front mounting system. All right, so this is the mount I got here. I'll have the links down below where you get it. This one, it has this ring right here, which because of that, I try not to put this on my wrap of the car because I think it'll damage it long-term. So my choice for mounting is actually on the headlights. With the Tesla, it's easy. You got this giant headlight. So how this thing works, it's a, a suction. I put it on tight as I can, and this thing pulls the air out, and then that's it. That's the mount. And then I have this here for a safety, which I'll show in a second how that hooks up. And then we'll get the camera put here. Another thing with the camera too is that I didn't have initially, but I do now is using ND filters. If you don't know what these are, look up online. There's lots of information on them, but they're very important for helping your exposure to get it where you want. So yeah, ND filter is very important. I'm not gonna go into depth what they do, but this is something you wanna invest in for shooting rollers, especially in the bright daylight to get your exposure right. So once I have it mounted, I can use the wrist strap as a safety because trusting these clips long-term, I don't know if it's a great idea. So if this does happen to come loose, it'll hang and not go under the car and get destroyed, which we don't want. So that's more or less the setup. I'm just gonna attach this inside for our safety and then we're good to go. mounting on the back, basically the same story. The only thing I do different is I use this uh, nut for the Tesla uh, the tail light for my safety instead of a string, because it's there. That's it, that easy. talk about the settings I use on this camera. This was a very big ass thing in the last video. But first, I'm gonna give you a little secret that the clips you saw in the last video. All of those were filmed in auto with no ND filter. How I achieved that is time of day. It was an early morning, a beautiful sunrise. There was also fog in the air, which kind of really helped everything look really good. It had nothing to do with the actual camera settings. It was all lighting in that aspect. But with that, we're gonna go over what settings I use now 
that I've had more time with the camera, gotten more familiar with it, and how I get my shots to look the way they do now. So for the settings on the camera, there's two things. Here's your shutter speed and your ISO. You can't adjust aperture since it's fixed, so you only have the two things you can change. And the two things that you want to make sure is always double your frame rate. So if you're shooting 24 frames per second, you're shooting one over 50. And then if you're shooting uh, 60 frames per second, then you want to be one over 120. Self-explanatory. So having those settings on the camera though, in a bright sunny day like today, will cause the image to be very overexposed. And so that's where the ND filter comes in. The ND filter will bring down the exposure so that you have a nice clean image at those shutter speeds because you want those shutter speeds for a smooth cinematic look. Um, which is really what makes the rollers look good. The rollers that you saw in the first video, link down below if you haven't seen it, I achieved that without an ND filter because of time of day. I was able to have the shutter speed lower because it wasn't as bright and sunny out. It may not have been exact because I was on auto settings, but it still was relatively close, that one over 50 to get that shutter speed down. Once you have the ND filter on, the other setting is the ISO. And the ISO I have set to a range. I have a range of 50 to 800. You could do the 50 to 400 if you prefer that to have the image look a little cleaner because the higher the ISO, the more noisy the image will get. I find 800 is like kind of the max I like to go with this camera. And so that's where I have it set to. The reason why you want the range is because while you're doing driving roller shots, you could pass through a tunnel or something like that. And then it needs to adjust to compensate for how dark it may get or just passing trees or overpasses, whatever, you name it, it can affect the image. So that's that's why I have it set to that range for doing rolling shots. And now we're gonna talk about editing. There's one more setting on the camera that you can adjust as well, and that is your color profile between normal color, HLG, and the D-Log flat profile. I personally use the D-Log flat profile, and so this next step is something that you kind of have to do if you're shooting in that profile. If you're shooting in normal and just on your phone, then ignore this but we're gonna go hop on the computer now. Okay, now on the computer. So now you got your footage on the computer and you're ready to edit. The, the steps I'm gonna do here are gonna be the same for Final Cut if you're a Final Cut Pro user. And if you're a DaVinci Resolve user, you don't need me telling you how to do this. Let's be real here. Anyways, <laughs> let's jump into this here. We have the footage. I like to use adjustment layers as well for this. One adjustment layer that is set to the DJI correction light, which you can, I believe you can get from their website for this camera. And all it does is turn the log footage back into the normal color profile, but you're in 10 bit color and you have that little bit at your dynamic range. And so that just kind of cleans up the image for the first bit. And now my secret spice, what I always do with all my DJI footage, whether it's drones or the pocket camera, is I have this teal and orange LUT that I put on it. It just really makes it pop. It gives a bit more contrast and I like how the colors look. And then the extra thing I do to it is I set it to a 50% instead of a full 100%. It's too much of 100%, but that's it. That's all I do to my footage to make it look the way I want. There's nothing special beyond that. I think primarily what you wanna do is focus on your time of day when you're filming and making sure you have good light. That's more important than the post editing after the fact. And it goes a lot farther. But that's it. That's my, my secret sauce. That's all I do to my footage to make it look the way that you guys seem to like. So the main takeaway from this video is that it's not all about the settings on the camera. It's also about the lighting. Right now I am filming on the Pocket 3. As you can see in the backdrop there, we're starting to get a bit of color because it is almost sunset. And I currently do not have an ND filter on this camera because the lighting right now doesn't require it and I'm gonna get a better image overall because this is very good lighting for this camera. So if you shoot sunrise or sunset, you're gonna get a way better looking image in the middle of the day, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. Put your ND filter on and you can still get some great shots. So hopefully that answered your guys' questions on the settings I use for this camera. If not though, leave a comment down below and we'll talk about it. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching, bye.